Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. Today, we're working on the off-grid chicken house again. As you may notice, it's missing one important thing, the door. We ain't got new door money. So I uh, borrowed a door from behind my buddy's barn while he was out of town. We're gonna put it in right here today. Now most doors come pre-hung. They've got the threshold and they got the jams and everything all put together the hinges. You just kind of pop it into place, square it up and screw it down. My buddy Ricky wasn't kind enough to leave that kind of door unsupervised. So we're gonna custom build the threshold and the jams and everything else in place and just take the slab and put it in. We're gonna do it without any fancy woodworking stuff cause I ain't got any fancy woodworking stuff. Just some basics, we'll make it happen. The first thing that we gotta do is do a little prep work on our rough opening, so we'll do that. So all we did was just put some flashing tape down around the bottom of it. We made sure that we wrapped the corners because that's really kind of the point where water can get in the most. The tape has some stretch to it so you're able to kind of stretch it and wrap it around so that it just creates one single drainage plane across the bottom. The other thing we did was we made sure that we didn't go past this wall here because we want the threshold to cover it entirely. Let me back up a second for somebody who's never done any kind of rough framing or whatever but a rough opening right here is 38 by 82 because our standard door size is 36 by 80. So for a pre-hung door, you're accounting for three quarters of an inch of jam thickness on each side and a little bit of wiggle room so you can shim it up level. Speaking of level, we're gonna put a level down on the bottom and check and see how everything settled out because we, we really want our threshold to be level. We're really close. We're probably like a 16th. That's, that's good enough. So we're gonna cut down our threshold, which is this piece of red oak right here to fit right in there. You can also buy metal thresholds, but uh, well, I didn't want to. Measure twice, cut once is crap advice. Measure once and cut once. Be a man. Well, that would have been a lot funnier if it didn't fit, but she fits. Now, before we screw this down, I want to establish a small amount of slope on it just in case any water does get on it. I don't want it running back towards the door. I really don't need much. And this is the part where I'm deviating from like, you know, the right way to do things because a normal threshold has its own slope and I don't feel like shaving it down. This will work probably. It, it'll be all right. Now that is what you call good enough for who it's for. So what I'm gonna do before I permanently set that threshold down, I'm gonna get my shims right exactly where I need them. And then I'm going to run three continuous beads of sealant underneath that. Water likes to find a way. So if it does get under there, it's not gonna end up keep going into the house. And there we go. We might have managed to split the end of it. We might fill it up with Lexel and keep going. I don't really know. So now we're gonna move on to our jams. Now for those who don't know, the jam is the interior trim piece that's on the door that the hinges screw to. Not to be confused with the stop, which is the little bitty strip that the door actually butts against that's even further inside the jam. You follow? Good talk. So we're gonna measure for those all the way around. All right, so as fate would have it, we're, we're down this level here and on our header, which is good because that, that's less shimming work to do. We're gonna cut our two side pieces to 80 and three quarters and then the top piece, uh, well, whatever's left. All right, so before I actually cut those jams, it's a good idea to measure the door. That's a very nice door to be technically acquiring. I'm happy with it. Thanks, Ricky. So anyway, I measured it and it's actually 79 and a quarter to the top, which makes sense. It kind of looks like it was trimmed down at some point. So we're gonna shorten our jams on the side to about, I don't know, 79 and a half, give us a little bit of wiggle room and then do it that way. I should mention to y'all, I've never done this before. Uh, we're, we're really just making it up as we go, but, but I think it's gonna work. I'm, I'm feeling good about it. All right, so we got it all up in place. We got everything shimmed. We got it screwed into the jack stud. It's pretty dang close to square and I've got an eighth of an inch of clearance all the way around. So it should fit this door. This door that I can't hang right now. This door that I can't hang right now because I bought the wrong dang hinges. So I'm gonna run up to the hardware store, get the right hinges, and uh, I think I need to get a chisel. We'll get back on it. There we go.
And now the nervous part, we gotta see if it fits in the hole we made over there. All right, so we got it a solid, real close. That little gap at the top is no big deal because the door is going to sit against the stop on the outside. But we're a little tight down this edge. We should be able to pull that shim, kind of suck it in and make it work. All right, so since it's just the one jam there that was causing a problem, what I did was I went ahead and marked the hinges on the other side. We're going to chisel out where they go so that they stay kind of recessed into the jam. Then we can make our final adjustments on this side. The following is a public service announcement. Uh, sharpen your chisels uh, so that your chiseling don't look like this. But it's fine, the chickens don't care. All right, so we, we missed it by that much. But we're really, really close. And I think everybody can agree, a little too tight's easier to work with than a little too loose. So I might beat this with a hammer or take a sawzall to it, shave down the edges. I hadn't really figured it out yet. Did I mention I hadn't done this before? If I owned a sander, I could sand it, but I don't, so I can't. All right, so it fits. Kind of got to slam it a little bit. No big deal. And I'm not just saying that. I really think that it's not a big deal because this jam material, it's only been drying for maybe like three months. It'll shrink a little bit, so I'd rather have it on the tight side now. Next, we're gonna put the lock set in and then figure out how to drill the holes for the jam side, of, which I haven't figured out yet, but we'll call this progress. There we go. Yeah, I forgot a pencil today. All right, so we're real close. Our gaps are within like, I don't know, maybe a 16th of each other. That's good enough. The stop's gonna cover up the rest of it. So that's the last thing we need to do. We're gonna cut some strips. Then we're basically with the door closed, gonna nail them up in place with a tiny little gap so we can put our weather stripping on. I've been dragging y'all around long enough on this, so uh, we'll do it the quick way. And there we go. So what I did was with the door closed, I put the stop right up next to it and just gapped it like an eighth of an inch because I knew my weather stripping was a quarter of an inch and we wanted to compress on there. Now this is just the stick on type. Normal weather stripping on a factory built door actually goes into a slot behind the stop there, but it's pretty sticky. So I think it'll work. So it's a little stiff to get closed, but that's okay. Most importantly though, I'm not ending up with any kind of drafts or daylight coming through. All in all, I'm happy with it. So to wrap it up, this is absolutely a project that is easier by buying the one from the store. But the flip side of that is that the only cost to me on this one was the hinges and the lock set, a couple nails and screws, everything else we did ourselves. I still haven't decided what I'm doing with the one over there. Eventually we're going to be building an addition off of that side, but that's not going to have an exterior door. Total install time on this was probably about four, four and a half hours. I could probably save that down to three now that I've done it once. And when you compare that with a pre-hung door that'll go in in the 20 to 30 minutes, yeah, you know, you lost some time there. But you know what? This is mine. Sometimes I feel like it's worth doing things that take a little bit longer for the sake of learning something along the way. And I'm happy with it. Metal threshold will be better. But talking to the chickens, they want a porch off of this side, so we're going to have even less water contact with it. I ain't sweating it. As always, I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you learned something. I love you and God bless. If we were in California, I wouldn't even get prosecuted for stealing that door, so that's good. That'd be one less thing to worry about.